1994, I wrote this memoir of my time commanding the 2nd Brigade of the 101st Airborne Division. With a video cameraman, I then went to Vietnam to film scenes of the brigade's 1968 battlefields. I then produced the movie that you will now see. It was first shown at a brigade reunion. In that movie, today means 1996. I took command of the 2nd Brigade on September 1st, 1967. Our mission was to be ready to go to Vietnam by mid-December. So, ready to go became our brigade motto, and the sign in front of brigade headquarters looked like this. At that time, the 2nd Brigade was simply the 1st Battalion of the 501st Infantry, the 2nd Battalion of the 501st, and the 1st Battalion of the 502nd. In Vietnam, with the addition of the 1st Battalion of the 321st Field Artillery, C Company of the 326th Engineers, B Company of the 326th Medical Battalion, and other units of the Division Support Command, the Brigade became the 2nd Brigade Task Force. On March 21st, 1968, north of Hue, the 2nd Squadron of the 17th Cavalry joined the 2nd Brigade Task Force. On September 1st, mid-December was three and a half months away, but the last month would be used for leaves and for packing up. And in the first month, each battalion took in hundreds of new men, got itself organized, and created a 4th Rifle Company. So that left six weeks for unit training. September 1967, I was assigned to 2nd Brigade, 101st Airborne Division and given command of D Company, 2nd Battalion, 501st Infantry. The unit would be later known as the Delta Raiders. My mission was to organize, equip, and train an Airborne Infantry Rifle Company from scratch. The unit, the replacements I received, I received in a little over two or three days, there were approximately 150 personnel. 96% of them, though, were non-infantry personnel. There were cooks, bakers, no candlestick makers, but they did have clerical personnel, truck drivers, uh, you name it, but uh, not infantry. We were also very short of uh, what we call middle management, or our NCOs. Instead of the 16 to 20 that uh, we were authorized, we only had uh, uh, four or five. Uh, this created a problem. Uh, especially in the uh, early training days. Brigade training plan was geared around uh, individual fire team, then squad level training, and then we progressed from squad level to uh, platoon and company training. We instilled in the unit at every opportunity uh, an immensely high level of discipline and the fact that they were raiders first and nothing else came second. I was a Rifle platoon sergeant, second platoon of Charlie Company, first Bible first. Uh, they assembled us people that were not infantry. I think I had two infantry people in my my platoon, which was a pretty good sized platoon. It was full strength. But we had cooks, I had one band member, I had mechanics, and various other MOSs, and we had a short period of time to train them in. And then we had six weeks of real intensive training, infantry training, live fire exercises, and long road marches, and village, you know, village fighting. And, uh, I like the live fire exercises and, of course, night training. We did a lot of night fighting. Ambushes every other night in Vietnam. And it, uh, 
On the 15th of December, the 2nd Brigade was ready to go, and it went. Charlie Gadd, who was a squad leader in the 2nd Brigade, wrote in his book, Line Doggy, It was snowing lightly when our C-141 Starlifter ascended from the runway at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. We are a well-trained group, A Company, 1st Battalion, 501st Infantry, an element of Uncle Sam's proud 101st Airborne Division. Most of us were replacements, military police, armor, artillery, mechanics, clerks, cooks. But three months of intense infantry training had honed us to the sharpness of expensive cutlery. Upon landing and unloading at Benoit Air Base near Saigon, the 2nd Brigade, now the 2nd Brigade Task Force, moved out to the 25th Infantry Division base camp at Kuchi, 20 miles to the west. This is a street scene in the town of Kuchi today. Here is a view from the ground where the 25th Division base camp was then located. No trace of that base camp remains today. The territory around that camp was Viet Cong infested. Although the brigade mission at first was in-country training, companies made enemy contact in the close-in training area. The brigade took casualties, and the distinction between training and operations quickly disappeared. In mid-January, General Westmoreland, U.S. commander in Vietnam, uh, this map is from his book, moved the 1st Cavalry Division with two of its brigades from its base camp at An Khe to a new base camp near Hue. He then ordered the 101st Airborne Division to reinforce the 1st Cav with one brigade. In late January, the 2nd Brigade Task Force was airlifted 450 miles north to be under the 1st Cav's operational control. The 1st Cav asked that the 1502nd, with C battery of the 1st of the 321st Artillery, be flown directly to Quang Tri, where it would report to the Cav's 1st Brigade. The rest of the 2nd Brigade Task Force flew into Fubai just south of Hue. This is Fubai today. An international airport is now under construction. As the brigade's units arrived, they moved out to the first calves nearby LZ El Paso. Two months later, when the rest of the 101st came north, El Paso became Camp Eagle. This is how Camp Eagle looks today. And this is what is left of Camp Eagle's entrance gate. By January 28th, the combat elements of the 2nd Brigade Task Force were present for duty in their new area of operations. This 1 to 250,000 scale map shows the full range of the operations of units of the 2nd Brigade in the next five months. The area north and west of Huey, LZ Sally, the Anlo Bridge and vicinity, Camp Evans, Highway 1, Hai Lang and LZ Jane, the area around Quang Tri, the Street Without Joy, Quang Dien District, Phu Vang District, and the area to the east and south of Hue. From here to here is about 70 kilometers or almost 45 miles.
On January 29th, the 1st Cav ordered the 1501st Infantry and the 2nd Brigade Command Post to move the next day, January 30th, to LZ Jane, near the district town of Hailang. At the same time, the 2501st would move to Camp Evans, the Cav's new base camp. The Chinese New Year is celebrated in Vietnam as the Tet National Holiday. In 1968, Tet fell on January 31st. On the night of January 30, 31, the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong launched their Tet Offensive. The 1501st Task Force and the command post of the 2nd Brigade had just arrived on LZ Jane. That night, the 1502nd Infantry was at Quang Tri, under the 1st Cav's 1st Brigade. The 2501st, on the move to Camp Evans, was split between LZ El Paso and Fubai. The 1501st and Brigade Command Post were at LZ Jane, and Brigade Rear was at Fubai where it was receiving the last elements of the Brigade Task Force. This is where LZ Jane was built, on a series of small ridges. In the distance is the ridge top of Jane's original perimeter. I'm standing on the south perimeter of LZ Jane. The trees you see here have been added since 1968. But on the night of 30, 31 January, the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong launched their massive Tet Offensive. One target was LZ Jane. The attack came right here. It was in the sector of the 2nd Platoon C Company, 1501. stay in position. We were just getting organized. We got hit that night by the NVA and the VC when they kicked off the Tet Offensive, which was uh, really uh, probably the biggest offensive of the war. And uh, my platoon area was the one that got hit the hardest. We got hit by the NVA sappers, which were trained uh, commandos, trained to break into perimeters. They had satchel charges and hand grenades. They uh, jumped the wire, real agile little fellas. We had concertina wire out, trip flares and claymores, and they were still getting through it. But they didn't get, they didn't get in into the compound. We, we didn't let them in, so it, it worked out real good. My platoon did a good job. Fifty minutes later, the 1501 reported all quiet. Six of its men wounded. Fourteen NVA killed. Three NVA prisoners, and thirteen weapons captured. The 1501st had been ready. In the next five months, units of the 2nd Brigade Task Force, operating from Kwang Tri to south of Hue, from the coast of the South China Sea into the mountains and jungles nearby, and fighting as a team alongside Arvin and Province forces, would take part in some of the heaviest fighting of the Vietnam War. On the night of 30, 31 January, the NVA had attacked Quang Tri with several battalions. For three days, the Cavs' 1st Brigade with the 1502nd attached, using all available 1st Cav assets, and working with Arvin and Province forces, was heavily engaged in and around Quang Tri. An NVA battalion had taken Hai Lang, seven kilometers from LZ Jane. Just before noon on 3 February, the 1st Cav ordered the 2nd Brigade to take Highlang back and to open Highway 1. 
The 1501st immediately engaged the enemy with all four of its rifle companies. The road to Highlang was then dirt all the way. Today, halfway to Highlang, where the dirt road meets the railroad track, a Highway 1 bypass now intersects that road, and from this point into town, the old dirt road is paved. That former dirt road reached the district chief's compound and the highway to Quang Tri, and then went into town. On February 3rd, fierce NVA resistance stopped the 1501 down this road. The next day, February 4th, B, C, and D companies executed a fully supported, coordinated attack. B Company fought its way into this point, turned south along Old Highway 1, and set up a blocking position. Meanwhile, C Company left the road here and moved through the open ground to the south end of town and attacked north, fighting house to house. D Company entered the town here, and B Company, C Company, and D Company, with massive support from A Battery, 1-3-2-1st Artillery, in a furious battle, in the late afternoon succeeded in taking possession of Highlang. While the 1501 was engaged at Highlang, the 1502 was at Quang Tri, operating with the 1st Cav's gunships. Five days after the Tet attack, the 1502 reported that, including enemy killed by air and artillery, it had accounted for approximately 250 NVA. On February 10th, the 1502 rejoined the 2nd Brigade at LZ Jane. Meanwhile, the 2501st had been operating out of Camp Evans under the 3rd Brigade, 1st Cavalry Division. On February 21st, the 3rd Brigade attacked eastward toward Hue with its three cavalry squadrons and the 2501st Infantry. The 2501st left the distant wood line and moved into the open countryside with C and D companies abreast, C Company on the left. Captain Wayne McMenemy, commanding D Company, had been wounded and evacuated the day before. Let these scenes of today help you visualize the battle that Lieutenant Cleo Hogan, acting commander, described the next day in his diary. By noon, we knew we were close to the NVA. At 13.30, as we approached a stream and wood line, the 1st platoon on the left, 3rd platoon on the right, C Company on our left, the 3rd platoon opened up while the 1st platoon crossed the stream. When we reached the wood line, I thought we would lose the whole 1st platoon. It looked like every tree was firing at us. I had to commit the second platoon. Joe Hooper and Sergeant Urban killed about five or ten NVA, and the other NVA began to withdraw. In the meantime, C Company had advanced through the woods and were killing the NVA as they came out. The NVA decided to fight it out with D Company, and the fighting was hand-to-hand -hand for close to two hours. Lieutenant Bush, recon platoon leader, came up from the right flank and began killing the NVA in the trenches. This opened the way for D Company to advance through the woods and join Company C. In just a little over three and a half hours, we had overrun a major NVA headquarters. The dead NVA were everywhere. 21 men from D Company had been wounded. Staff Sergeant Sims had been killed. Recon platoon had three wounded, and C Company had two wounded. I am really proud of these raiders. Captain Mack had them ready, and they really performed well today. Staff Sergeant Clifford Sims and Joe Hooper of the Delta Raiders received the Medal of Honor for their actions on this day. Sergeant Sims posthumously. A short period of time, I was able to observe Joe Hooper in action. 
I saw him going from one bunker line to another bunker, assaulting them, throwing hand grenades, and at least for a major portion of the battle in the center of the village of La Chu, Joe Hooper was a giant. He was inspiring men to continue the attack. He was personally charging bunkers himself. He was going into the bunkers and pulling out the Vietnamese, North Vietnamese to make sure that they were dead. And for a while, Joe Hooper was one true giant on 21 February 1968. The next day, February 22nd, the 2501 continued toward the east, and two days later, it entered the city of Way from the north, while the Marines and the Arvin took that city from the south. By mid-February, with the 1502nd returned, LZ Jane's perimeter had grown to include other small ridges. It now held the six 155 millimeter howitzers of C Battery 11th Artillery. But in the incessant rain, Jane had become a mud hole, and on February 23rd, its access road was so bad that C Company 326 engineers, whose primary task was to keep Highway 1 clear of mines, had to tow ammunition trucks with a bulldozer. In our ammo section, Lieutenant Wheatley and Sergeant Ford probably did the most outstanding job of resupplying ammunition that I've ever seen. I don't think they would have made it without them. They commanded the trucks from the 155 battery. They picked up abandoned vehicles on the highway, and I think they liberated some vehicles. Anyway, we had more vehicles than the Airborne Battalion had in uh, Vietnam, and they ran them continually between the ammo dump and our battery position. They kept us in business. Because we uh, would fire 1,000 rounds a day. The 1501st and 1502nd were based at LZ Jane all of February. Between the two of them, the infantry battalions were springing on average one ambush a night. They had helicopters for combat assault almost every day, and they were working well with the CAVS aerial rocket artillery and its first of the ninth CAV squadron. 8-inch artillery was supporting them from Camp Evans, and the teamwork of units was improving with each day. The 1501st was fighting along the street without joy, so named by the French after a 1953 battle in which, with a 30 battalion force of infantry, airborne and armor, including Marines landed over the beach, the French failed to destroy the 95th Viet Minh Regiment. This relic is evidence of the heavy fighting of those times. A battery A of the 321st Artillery established fire support base Mogan on this then very wet ground on the street without joy. February was a long month a wet month, and in the filled rice paddies, a cold month. In his book, Blood Brothers, Platoon Sergeant Timothy O'Connor of A1501 writes, No words can describe the misery of a combat infantryman fighting and living in the mud. Lying in the mud with a cold rain beating down on you, waiting for the VC to hit your position, or lying in an ambush site, shaking from the cold rain, is a bitch. In my history of the second brigade, I write of this period. Our troopers were marvelous, brave, competent, battle-wise, and responsive. When we arrived in the first Cavs area of operation, most of them had been together for months and they had already bonded those bonds had grown stronger in battle. If you don't start off as a point man, because you have to learn the ropes from somebody that knows what's going in. And so what I had to do was train with, my guy trained with, with, with Charlie Gadd, who did write a book called Vine Doggy. And uh, he trained me a lot, and Bud Dykes. And he just had to work with certain individuals, certain guys. 
And after a while, if you were doing pretty well, they would put you in what's called a slack man. A slack man is a man who followed the point man. And if you got pretty good at that, they would let you take point. And so then you kind of worked your way, earned your way into it. And I started walking point probably about the first week of March of 68, right before we went back to rebuild this fire support base called LD Sally. On March 1st, the 2nd Brigade Task Force assembled on LZ Sally. The 2501st came back from the 1st Cav, and the full 2nd Brigade Task Force was together again. Almost like a miracle, the weather improved, the rain stopped, and the sun came out. I'm standing on the L helipad of LZ Sally. Behind me is the hole in the ground that used to be our tactical operations center, our command post. Further to the right is the laterite strip that was here when we got here that we used for helipads. And right standing on that strip is a tower of a power line that feeds an enormous cement plant that's been built just to the west of LZ Sally about a mile. This 1 to 50,000 scale map shows that the 2nd Brigade command post at LZ Sally was only two kilometers from the headquarters of the 3rd Regiment of the 1st Arvin Division here at PK-17. The 2nd Brigade immediately went to work with that regiment. On the 3rd of March, the 2nd Brigade Journal reported that the next day, the 2nd Brigade would provide artillery support for LZ preparation, would coordinate air support, and would assist a combat assault using 1st Cav helicopters of the 3rd Battalion, 3rd Regiment, to this location, from which it would attack southward into this village, eliminating the NVA VC, supported by Kwangdian District PF for Popular Force Platoon, also inserted by the 2nd Brigade, that would provide a blocking force here. All this was in support of the Kwangdian district chief, who was gratified to use his RF regional force companies and his PF platoons in coordinated operations with the battalions of the 2nd Brigade. On arrival at Sally, the 1502nd established a fire support base called NOLA near the critical Anlo Bridge. This bridge, built in 1977, replaces the old bridge, which was 300 meters upstream to the south. This is the road to Firebase NOLA. The 1502nd quickly went into action using the tactics that it had perfected in its 10 days with the Cavs 1st Brigade at Quang Tri. Colonel Pham Van Den, who at that time was district chief at Quang Dien, and I are at the Anlo Bridge. We are discussing the operations of the 1st of the 502nd from the 6th of March through the 10th of March, where they operated between the bridge and Quang Dien and had heavy contact with hamlets Fo Lai, Son Trung. Dong Lam, Nam Fu, Pho Nam, with the results being shown in the brigade history here. In June 1996, the operating area of the 1502nd is peaceful. Farmers are working their fields. In early March 1968, a month after Tet, the NVA was still in this area in strength, recovering in fortified villages, and VC were in every tree line. Each village was a potential target and a source of ground fire, and each rice paddy was a potential landing zone. The troopers of 1502 first strike got busy, led by the hard-charging strike, their battalion commander, who was over every fight bringing in support. 
it seemed like we would uh, go out in our C&C ship and, and uh, work with the uh, troops on the ground and uh, as they were going from Ville to Ville. And it seemed like uh, just about on a daily basis we'd have to change helicopters because we'd get uh, so many rounds through them. That, that little ticking noise that uh, uh, those bullets made when they came through those helicopters was not too, too much fun. We knew after a while what, what the noise meant. On March 10th, the 2nd Brigade returned to the 101st Airborne Division, which was now at Camp Eagle. Eleven days later, the 2nd Squadron of the 17th Cavalry, Lieutenant Colonel Julius Beckton commanding, joined the 2nd Brigade Task Force. By now, B Company, 326 Med Battalion, had dust-off support out of LZ Sally, and Sally had become a powerful fire base. It was an honor and privileges for us artillerymen of the 1st Battalion, 321st Artillery Regiment to provide close and continuous fire support to you gallant infantry and cavalry soldiers of the 2nd Brigade, 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam. To respond to your needs, we frequently coordinated the fire of up to 10 batteries of 40 to 60 155mm guns and 105mm, 155mm and 8-inch howitzers in addition to our own 18 105mm howitzers. We took pride in what we did, and we're happy to do it for you, the real heroes of our times in combat. On March 27-28, the 1501st fought an action that would begin a new phase of operations for the 2nd Brigade Task Force. It was our first cordon operation. This is the hamlet of Tuan La on the Perfume River north of Hue. On March 27th, the 1501st, with A and B companies and its recon platoon, moving in from the west, had pinned the enemy in this village. But it was late afternoon, and with nightfall, the enemy would surely slip away if the 1501st didn't do something about it. This is Tuan Wah from the south. At about the same time of day that the battalion and brigade commanders met on this spot late in the afternoon and decided to wrap a tight cordon around the village and to call in Air Force flare ships for all-night illumination so no enemy could get out. The 1501st put D Company to the south, B Company to the west, and the recon platoon to the north with U.S. Navy swift boats in the Perfume River. During the night, the enemy tried to get out only to be killed or captured. This was the first in a series of encirclements that by mid-June broke the back of the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong in the 2nd Brigade Task Force's area of operations. At the end of March, the 2nd Brigade, with the 2501st, the 1502nd, the 2nd of the 327th Infantry from the 3rd Brigade, and the 217th Cav, moved northward to take over areas of the 1st Cav Division while the CAV carried out a major operation west of Quang Tri to assist in the withdrawal of the Marines at Quezon. The 1501st remained at LZ Sally under the 3rd Brigade 82nd Airborne Division, which took over the 2nd Brigade's command post, and the 2nd Brigade moved its CP to Camp Evans. On April 10-11, the 2501st executed the 2nd Brigade's second cordon operation at the village of Phuc Dien. The 2501st was responsible for the security of engineers building an artificial port here called Utah Beach. After making a heavy contact at Phuc Dien here on April 10th, the 2501st assembled its forces by helicopter and by nightfall it had trapped the enemy in the village. This farmer is describing the action at Phuc Dien on April 10th to the Catholic priest who is his pastor at Hai Lang. Uh, Surrounded by them and killed. In mid-April, the first calf having returned from Quezon, 
the 2nd of the 17th and the 2501st returned to their old area of operations. The 2nd Brigade Command Post reoccupied Sally, and resuming command of the 1501st, the 2nd Brigade Task Force began operating in this area. The 101st then ordered the 1502nd to be detached to the 1st Brigade in the mountains south and west of Hue, where for two weeks it secured fire support base Henry and then Bastogne. The 2nd Brigade immediately executed its third cordon. On April 17th, operating out of Quang Dian, the 1501st encircled the enemy at Ap Miza and Ap Dong Xuen. That was followed by the 4th Cordon. On April 21st, the 2501, which had just moved its command post to Quang Dian, used all four of its rifle companies, the 1st Arvin Division's Black Panther Company, the 222nd RF Company of Quang Dian District, and five PF platoons to surround an enemy force at these two villages, Kim Doi and Tan Tung. One day, the Command Sergeant Major Cannon and I got out of the helicopter right there. We walked over here to this spot, and they were interrogating a prisoner, VC prisoner, and he was pointing to the patch of one of the nearby soldiers, and I asked the interpreter, what is that man saying? And the interpreter saying to him, said to me, that the VC prisoner is saying, that little bird is real mean. And so we had a sign put over the command post entrance right here about that high. It said, that little bird is real mean. He was talking about the screaming eagle on the patch because that little bird out there in the countryside was real mean to the VC. That mean little bird then executed its fifth cordon at Fukien, six kilometers east of Sally in the famous stocking. Early in the afternoon of April 28th, the Black Panther Company of the 1st Arvin Division, operating in cooperation with the 501st Infantry out of Quang Dien, made heavy contact at this location. An estimated multi-company NVA force was in these villages. The terrain was ideal for an encirclement. The 1501st moved its A Company overland to the riverbank here. Brigade brought B Company 2501 in by helicopter and the 1501 placed it here. Brigade then brought in A Company 1502 and placed it here. A Company then moved to occupy this hedgerow all the way to the river here. Meanwhile, Brigade had arranged with the District Chief of Huang Tra for three PF platoons to secure this sector along the river. And for a platoon of Catholic militia for this sector. With A-1502 and the Black Panther Company stretching to cover this sector, and with troops right on the riverbanks, the cordon was complete and illumination began. The next day, Brigade lifted in D-2501 to cover this sector with two platoons and to extend this sector with one. Two days later, on the 1st of May, the enemy attempted to break out of his trap here, and in this open field, was turned back by A Company 1502 with massive artillery support from LZ Sally. On May 3rd, the enemy again tried to break out without success. The 1501st pounded the trapped enemy with artillery and used tear gas and loudspeakers to further demoralize him. On May 4th, the enemy began to surrender. These were the results of cordon number five. The second brigade lost eight men killed and had 44 wounded. The Black Panther Company lost two men killed and had 12 wounded. 
The 2501 executed the first day of Cordon 6, and the 1502, now returned from the 1st Brigade and replacing the 2501 in Huangdian, executed the second day. Intelligence learned during the Fukien Cordon revealed that the encircled enemy had asked an NVA unit at Ap Phonam here for help. So the 2501st, its command post at Kuangdian, on 3 May, encircled that enemy unit. The 1502nd, replacing the 2501st at Kuangdian, completed the operation on 4 and 5 May. The day that cordon ended, the 2nd Brigade began its 7th cordon at La Chu. This is La Chu, just off Highway 1, 5 kilometers west of Hue. On May 5th, the 2501, operating out of LZ Sally and using D Company 1501, formed an airtight four company ring around the enemy force that was in La Chu and turned on the lights to prevent his escape. The next day, the 2501 withdrew the rifle companies on the west, south, and east of the village so that the second of the 17, with D Company 1501 attached, could attack into the village and destroy the trapped enemy. B Troop, 2nd 17th, with three tanks and seven armored personnel carriers, attacked down through the village. A Troop circled to the east and attacked into the village, and D Company 1501 attacked alongside B Troop. Together, in a furious bunker-to-bunker -bunker battle, they cleaned out the village in a battle that, under artillery and U.S. Air Force illumination, went on until well after midnight. The thing about uh, illumination is, is that it lights up the battlefield for both sides. Our dismounted scouts and infantry squads had to fight from bunker to bunker in the, uh, in the limited light and clearing as they went. Uh, they were able to, to and did direct fire from the armored vehicles whenever they could uh, at the individual bunkers. Fighting for the, the individual bunkers was intense because it was essentially man on man. And the battle, I think, was over about 2 o'clock in the morning when uh, we finally cleared the, the, the last bunker. Uh, it was one of the most intense battles that we'd ever been in. Sergeant Robert M. Patterson of the 2nd 17th Cav received the Medal of Honor for his heroism that day. In mid-May, with the 1502nd operating in Quang Dien and the 2501st around Sally, the 2nd Brigade received a new mission to take over from the U.S. Marines Task Force X-Ray the area to the north and east of Hue. On May 15th, the 1501st moved into that area, followed by the 217th Cav, based at Camp Eagle. The 1501st set up its command post at a fire base called Mongoose, just outside Fuvang District Town. The 501st mission was to secure the road and pipeline to Cocoa Beach. The location of fire base Mongoose is now a built up area. This view from a spot nearby shows the kind of countryside in which the 1501st operated. Four days after arriving in its new area of operations, the 1501st executed the Brigade Task Force's 8th Cordon at Ap Dong Ji Tai. A week later, it executed the 9th at Suan Hua. The 2nd Brigade's 10th Cordon was at Tan Le Zadong. On May 30th, A Troop was operating out of the 217th Cavs fire base forward. By now, A Troop had been reinforced by a Marine Antos platoon. Uh, the Antos was a tracked vehicle that carried six 106 millimeter recoilless rifles and by a Marine tank platoon. A Troop found enemy in Li Zadong. Seeing an opportunity for a 217th cordon, Brigade arranged with the 3rd Arvin Regiment to move one company of its 3rd Battalion into a blocking position at the south end of the village. 
Brigade then lifted B Company 1501st into a landing zone east of the village, where it would link up with the Arvin Company to seal the east side. Just before nightfall, a platoon of C Company 1501 was lifted into an LZ at the village's north end to join A Troop in sealing the north and west sides and the 2nd 17th turned on the lights. During the night, the encircled enemy tried in vain to break out. At dawn, he was turned back in an escape effort in the Arvin sector and again at the north end. The units blocking to the south and east held their positions and after an artillery preparation, A Troop reinforced, swept the enemy from the north, attacked into its east side and cleaned out Les Adams. U.S. casualties in this operation were six men wounded. Two Arvin soldiers were killed and two wounded. The enemy 10th Local Force Battalion lost 156 killed, 29 taken prisoner, and 75 individual and crew served weapons captured. Cordon 11 was the climax of a coordinated brigade task force operation with Vietnamese forces into an enemy base area along the coast in Phu Tu district, 20 kilometers to the east of Hue. The battle scene, which is off this 1 to 50,000 map uh, to the east, resembled this coastal area 12 kilometers east of Hue. The 2nd Brigade Task Force organization as the operation launched looked like this. The participating Vietnamese forces were The combined operation went in the day after the battle at La Zé Dong ended. It soon became evident that we had another opportunity for a cordon. So I placed all the 2nd Brigade Task Force units under the 2nd of the 17th Cav. By the end of the next day, they had in place a cordon of three rifle companies and two cav troops. After another night of illumination and artillery attack, those units cleaned out the village. These were the results of the 11th cordon. This was the end of heavy fighting for the 2nd Brigade Task Force in my time. Many of these men who had left Fort Campbell in December were dead or wounded, not with us in June. But the men who took their places had continued with the same competence and had fought with the same spirit. From Hue to Quang Tri, in day-to-day -day action in the rice paddies, villages, and nearby mountains, as well as in the cordon operations that had become the brigade trademark, the men of the 2nd Brigade Task Force had accomplished their mission. Security had returned to the countryside. Farmers were harvesting their rice without fear. On June 19, 1968, in the city of Hue, the President of the Republic of Vietnam, Nguyen Van Thieu, placed a battle streamer of the Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry with Palm on the colors of the 2nd Brigade Task Force. On June 28th, Brigade Command changed and the 2nd Brigade Task Force continued in further victories around Hue. In an operation in Vinlock with 1st Arvin Division, Province and U.S. Navy forces, the 2nd Brigade Task Force assaulted by surprise and then eliminated a long secure enemy base on the South China Sea. The period of the Cross of Gallantry Award in Department of the Army General Orders includes those further operations. And so ends my story of my time and yours in the 2nd Brigade.